All right. Better. We're a little better now. Okay. At the Art Center, and we're ready to start. This. So get started. All right. So we'll take a couple of minutes. Doug, we'll look. We'll have people can look at the gallery, can see the the work again, and then All right. we can get started in just a just a second. Sounds good. I'm expecting more students, maybe in five minutes. So maybe we give like ten minutes, and then we can get started. I'm good. You have questions for yes. Dr. Art or maybe grab some coffee or cookies? Cookies. Yeah. <laughs> on the reception desk. Yeah. Um, wait, can we pick up our piece? Oh. Um, we don't have to take a walk home with the air go home tonight. <laughs> you can. It's a Christmas well, present. Well, technically, it could be, it could be tomorrow. I, I did talk to Doug. So um, Stephen and Susan bought uh, one of the dogs. Oh, OK. So, it's a Christmas present for our daughter-in-law. Ah, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know when you, you can take it, but uh, <laughs> I think. Well, well I, yeah. I was thinking that because we're taking things down uh, uh, next week, early next week. So oh, okay. You can get it at okay. any time. Just as long as I have it early December. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> definitely then. Okay, so we'll start Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> oh. So now, if we're talking about specific, we can reference You can go right there. Okay. Excellent. Well, so you can go ahead and look like we kind of do, and then when we start, uh, you, can, you can kind of whatever series or piece that Doug might reference, we'll go ahead and focus on that, that piece. So, Where are you, Doug? This is my bedroom slash studio in Santa Fe, so. Santa Fe, wow. Mm -hmm. I bet there's a good I have been here, um, I have been here since 2018, so, oh, really? and really, really enjoying it, yes. <laughs> what's the weather like there today it is uh very windy so um every dust and allergen is blowing out there so i've been telling greg that i i'm i haven't been crying it's just my eyes are <laughs> feeling the <laughs> the allergies today but it was 60 degrees uh -oh. yesterday and probably <laughs> Not quite close to that today, I would say, but it was it's still a nice day. So well, still we've been ex experiencing some non-spring-like weather the last couple of weeks, though. Cold, yeah. cold, yes. We have snow on the ground. <laughs> so, I know. Uh, snow. When it snows here, okay. When it snows here, it's very picturesque. Um, it, it falls for a couple of days, and then it's gone by that afternoon when the sun comes out. So, <laughs> so um, I do not miss the snow with that way. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. We, still got, we still got people coming in and people getting situated. So, oh, I was going to get something. Sure. Where are they over there? Yeah. 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 All right. I 
Got two of these one in bars. I didn't want that one. Chocolate mint. I'll try this and see. What are the constant limits? It'll be oh, uh, 2018 years. <laughs> 2018, yeah. So um, let's see, what's that? Five going on five years in July. So yeah. Like it? I do. Yeah. It's um, it is uh, the one thing that I had to get used to was standing in lines. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the supermarket or what? <laughs> Supermarkets, post office, um, people here just seem to take that for granted. Um, I'm, you know, I said coming from North Dakota, where you like, if you're in a line for 10 minutes, it's like, whoa, that's too long. You know, here people will just resign themselves to the fact they're going to be in a line for um, any given duration, I guess. So, you know, oh. but 
traffic is traffic is reasonable you know there's times when it's it's fairly heavy and um the uh crime rate and homelessness rate seems to be on the rise here as well so even like you know like you go downtown or something or yeah, the, I try to make it downtown uh, to the plaza area as much as I can, you know, but that really got um, the um, um, was really messed up when the pandemic hit and, you know, um, closed. This, this state was virtually closed for a good six to eight months, you know, so. Yeah, but I probably, um, and walking around, I think we can get started. Uh, yeah. Um, if you guys want to come sit, come sit, <laughs> bring food, it's okay. Uh, but I'd like to introduce our guest tonight uh, is Doug Flieger, um, who's a, a former Minot State University professor. Uh, he got his BSEB at Minot State. When would that have been, Doug? 1984. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. And then we're going to get uh, his MFA in painting from the University of North Dakota. Um, and he's taught art and been making art for quite a long time. Um, 30, 30 plus years. So plus years. Yeah. Not yeah. Um, so we're really we're really happy to be able to have his his work on display in the exhibition as part of the dog and pony show uh, number two. Uh, and he's going to kind of talk to us a bit tonight about uh, his work and, and his process and kind of the inspiration that he draws from. Uh, so go ahead, Doug, if you want to talk, we'll, and then we'll do questions after, or if you have something where you have a break and you want to see if anybody has any questions, that's good too. Okay. So, okay. That's, all right. Okay. Well, um, first of all, I need to say um, I have not been crying. It, <laughs> um, I am experiencing seasonal allergies beyond belief today, and um, I assured Gregory that I have my pants on, so we're we're good to go. Okay. That's um, I have I have been here in Santa Fe since 2018, uh, July of 2018. My first visit here was in um, December, uh, Christmas of 1984, and I walked around the plaza area. And kind of threw my hat up, Mary Tyler Moore style, if you know that reference, and said, I'm going to live here someday. Um, it took me a while, but in 2018, I was finally able to realize that. So um, it's a very art centric town, um, galleries beyond belief, good restaurants, so on and so forth. Um, probably the, the funny part about that is, or the uh, um, ironic part is, I have had one exhibition here so far in Santa Fe, and that was at the, the at our Southside Library branch uh, back in just before the pandemic hit. So, so um, not exposed to the art world here yet, but um, I'm very appreciative that that I've seemed to have a more of a following back in North Dakota now since I have departed. But um, uh, in 20 in 2020, when the pandemic here uh, hit here in New Mexico, well, all across the United States, but here in New Mexico, uh, it closed the state down for a good portion of the time. And I used that isolation to um, make art like crazy. Um, it really kind of was like a almost a rebirth, or I'll call it an art renaissance for me, because um, from 2014 to 2018, um, I had virtually made nothing new um, as far as that goes. I was back there at that time in North Dakota working for the Tabi Museum and also teaching at Minot State. And between those two, I just didn't find time to make art. And I probably lived in a couple of places that weren't conducive to making art. But here, um, I don't have a, a, a dedicated studio space. I just have the corner of my bedroom, which which I am in, by the way, and um, it has been working quite well for me. And so um, I have cranked out a number of series, including the ones you see there on the wall. Um, so um, if you have some questions about any of them, I'm, I'm open to that. Or um, if we want to just start with one of the, the series and go from there, we can do that as well. So 
what would you like to do? Do we want to just start with maybe, maybe if you want to start with, because so when, when we talked about initially having the show, the one that we were looking at possibly exhibiting was the Bandanorama series um, that you had. Yep. This okay. is kind of the second, yep. the second, uh, in, 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 or second uh, series part that you've done. So maybe you right. want to talk right. about yeah. to the Okay. Yeah, I'll start there because, um, the, again, the funny part there was um, a lot of the uh, collage elements that you'll see in those paintings are sent to me by none other than Walter Peel. And the irony comes again from the fact I originally purchased some of those for him to do the very same thing. And then he turned around and sent them unbeknownst to me. And I, and I uh, would contact him and say, uh, Walter, did you know that I bought those for you back in such and such? And he didn't recall it, you know. So um, then he he sent me other things to to fill in, and um, it it kind of took off from there. Uh, but the first part of the, the excuse me the Bandanorama series um, was inspired by. I'm going to dish down here and try to retrieve that for you. and hoping everybody will be able to see this. Um, this right here is the little bandana that I found in a local um, shop there in Minot. And I was just inspired or just enamored by the, the graphics and the colors in it. And that features it prominently in one of the earlier pieces. And then, um, I supplemented those pieces with, um, again, when Walter sent me the uh, the stuff that goes into it, the, uh, I can't think of the word right now, um, the uh, collage elements there, that's that's what I'm looking for. And decided, he, he kept saying, um, he said, well, do them bigger, keep doing them bigger. And so I moved to this from a 12 by 12 scale to the the 24 by 24s, or excuse me, they're 20, 20 by 20s that you see uh, on the wall there behind you guys. Um, I work with acrylics and um, again, found objects or um, collage elements. And a lot of collage, or excuse me, some of the found elements are virtually found. Um, I pick things up off the street as I walk daily in my neighborhood and or they are purchased for the, uh, the very purpose of like, oh, this would fit well into that particular piece at the time. And um, you can see that um, color, I like to use color, um, humor plays a part of it. Um, I was raised in a Catholic family that was accused of, or, uh, and I'm, a, I'm of German descent. So we were accused of not having any particular sense of humor. And um, I guess I wanted to prove people that we do. And sometimes I think about that um, humor is also used, might be used as a defense mechanism so that people um, don't always get a chance to know me, but somebody else has told me that they said that defense or that humor might also be like, you're not sure about the quality of your art or you as an artist. And um, I think that everybody has those, those self doubts, you know, about being assured about what you're doing. Um, because right now I'm just having a lot of fun doing it and have been really surprised at the volume of work that I've been able to turn out in the last couple of years. So when you, I have a question, when you work yep. on these pieces, like the, the, the paintings or bandana around the pieces, or even, like the tablets, skateboards that you were doing, you know, how much, uh, how much pre kind of planning or sketching or organization you put into layouts and the, what elements and stuff go into these pieces? Okay. Um, well, we remember, uh, Greg, we had talked earlier this morning when we were setting this up that um, I, have a, I have multiple sketchbooks. Um, I don't use sketchbooks in the traditional way that people think that, you know, like they're not filled with, finished pencil sketches or, um, you know, like, but they're, for me, they're, they become more like art journals. And I use them to record my thoughts, um, 
scrap pieces that I like. Um, if there's something that I like, I might be looking at a magazine or I might find something on the internet. Um, I will cut that out, print that out, stick it in there. So um, I will show you here. Um, yeah, okay. Everybody can hopefully see that. Um, this is the page for the uh, series of one of the pieces that's on the walls behind you there. And I also make, um, it's become again, more of a collage type thing for where I put all of the pieces for various things, the graphics, so on and so forth that I like and uh, just reuse it that way. Um, so it's kind of a diary, it's kind, it's definitely a journal um, and it just records the process for me because some of these ideas have been floating around, well, um, not in the case of this bandana, uh, excuse me, bandana rama two, that's a, that's a pretty new, but like the skateboard pieces have been in a sketchbook since 20, like 2007, maybe, I think was an originally, they were rec when I first started thinking about those. And uh, so uh, again, during this pandemic, uh, the, the lockdown, lots of those came to fruition after many, many years of just kind of idling there. Um, so, so I will think about things and then it seems like it gets to the portion where it has to come spilling out of you or, um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's um, just like um, an obsession, but it is, it becomes necessary, like, okay, I just got to get this out now. And uh, that's the way this last, at least these last two years have felt. So I find myself right now in kind of a, uh, maybe a little rest, a respite, but, um, you know, I, I have ideas for where I'm going next and what I want to do and so on and so forth. But um, Sometimes it, it just takes a while for me to get there. Um, so I was curious about these skateboards. Where do you find your items? Do you like thrift them? <laughs> uh, those have been, I go to, um, I, when I was living in Minot, um, I frequented the flea market. Um, I did all the vintage stores, I did all the antique places. Plus, I have a sister who lives in North Dakota who she loves to go to thrift stores. If I put in a request like, hey, I need this or that, she is on the, you know, she's on the mission. And <laughs> she has supplied me with uh, uh, quite a few of the items. But um, some of them are also found objects, literally found objects. Again, I walk every day and I will find stuff. Um, in, in my neighborhood, I will find strange, strange things uh, on the street. And I'm like, sometimes you go, I want to know the backstory to that. And sometimes I don't want to know the backstory to that. Um, one, one of those examples would be, I found um, a bloody carpet knife one day. And I'm going, okay, I don't want to know what's happened here. <laughs> But, you know, uh, I'll pick it up and put it in the trash and stuff like that. But many of the objects, um, I will pick them up because it's, it's like strange things like um, the, I found some really neat covers from um, tire valves from, from off of vehicles, things that fall off of vehicles, probably, um, things that fall out of people's pockets. I have found jewelry. I've found, um, well, very little money. <laughs> I'm hoping I would find lots of money, but uh, jewelry, a little bit of money, um, and just just keys, you name it. Um, I will find it uh, because just the number of people who, there's a trail up to the north of me here that I frequent often, and um, a lot of people will cross that and just, like I said, things drop out of their pockets and they don't think to look for them. So, um, and some are purchased specifically for, to fit the piece. Um, with Again, with the lockdown, Amazon became a go-to place. Um, I wasn't very excited about having to do that, but if it meant getting something quickly and um, being able to finish a piece, then I would go ahead and get it from there as well. Anybody else? 
All right, Santa Fe, is that kind of like, a, is it an arts district? Is it like a kind of? Oh, very, very, very much. Um, it is for the size of the, of the city. It is like the fourth largest um, art, um, how would you say it? Uh, it ranks right up there with New York and other places because um, there are everybody, uh, there's a large Native American population, there's a large Hispanic population, um, a lot of people retire here, um, I'm one of those, and um, like I said, there, there's a whole, the downtown area, there's a whole place called Canyon Road, it's very famous for its uh, galleries, a mile's worth of galleries, um, there's a wonderful place, um, I've only been to it once, I need to go back, um, well, of course, the George O'Keefe Museum is here. Uh, there's a place called Meow Wolf uh, for your younger people. Have you heard of this? It's the installation place. Um, we took some uh, of our guests to it. And for older people like myself, it's too overwhelming with lights and sound. Um, I was very overstimulated and wanted to get out quickly. <laughs> but young kids enjoyed it in there and uh, it, um, but these venues are all over the place there's you know there are many working artists here um, who make a living doing what they're doing and there are many who are um, their bartenders their waiters and waitresses um, just trying to to you know uh, make ends meet while they're doing what they want to do uh, it's a big film area it's a big music area so um, uh, there's a, there's a literary festival there's a film festival um, there's big art markets here. There's the Native American market. There is the uh, Spanish traditional market. And, um, you know, there's there's something going on all the time. Uh, it's probably a really, good, uh, really good opportunity for inspiration. And, and, and oh, yes, yes. Um, I will, like I said, I, I like to walk through the Don, Don Canyon Road and into the galleries to, um, I think one of the, the probably the most, awesome things um, to, to use that word was I walked into a gallery and there was a Chuck Close piece um, hanging on the wall and it wasn't a traditional it wasn't a self-portrait it was a sunflower and it was a tapestry wow. and when I saw who it was by I'm going like wow you know I had no idea but I know that he had um, worked with oops excuse me <laughs> um, he had worked with, um, uh, I think it was a, a company in Spain to print these, um, to print these jackered blankets is what they were. And then this, this one, this gallery had this one, and it was a sunflower and it had kind of a smiley face in the flower. So I, I guess it would have qualified as a self portrait or a portrait, but um, the asking price was, it was $25,000. And, you know, I said for, for a Chuck Close, it's nothing probably, but, but uh, you know, it was just really uh, pretty inspiring to be able to stand right there and see this. Uh, and there are uh, pieces like that, you know, throughout all these galleries as well, so. So oh, I, I have another question, if Peter has a question. Um, so. I'm really interested in how you make the dogs. Like, can you tell us more about the process and how you make them? Yep. Yeah, yeah. um, um, I wanted to start by saying that those started um, as quite a fluke. And by that, I mean, um, I was teaching elementary art in 1997. And I had a particular uh, rambunctious group of fifth and sixth graders that I needed a really good hands-on project with them to do. So I found this little article and it was called Scrap Pile Dogs. And I had just ordered that that year when I started. Um, it was called a treasure chest of wood. So I had all these wood components. I had this little article. I built four examples to show students and then we did the project and it involved um, hammering and nailing and, um, you know, so a little bit of carving and so on and so forth. And, you know, out of that, no students lost any fingers, no blood was drawn or so, so we were good. And I put those away until 2007. I painted the examples 
and I put them into a fundraiser at the Tabi Museum. And all of a sudden the, the price for them, a lot of people were coming up to me and saying, you know, um, they're, going, they're going through the roof. Um, I had to stop bidding. And some asked me, could you build me one of those? And I said, well, I don't see why not. And then um, it kind of started from there. So, but um, again, when I first started, I intended that they were to be totally um, found object dogs. And I stuck to that pretty good. But as I started developing further, they became like, oh, this works really nice as a component for this. Um, the heads in particular are two, two sizes of little wooden blocks. Um, the collar portion is, is a wheel component. And then um, when it, again, when I first started, I used spoons, wooden spoons, I used um, wire, anything that I could, could find to help convey that. Um, now I suppose they're more formulaic, but um, I wanted them to be, um, they're, they're, and they're meant to be folksy in nature, but their um, individual characteristics were really quite um, serendipitous. I mean, that, that was just a happy accident in the end. But um, they are, um, I will look at photos of real dogs. If people ask me to commission their dog, I will work from photos. Um, or again, they're, again, they're small thumbnails. And I should show you one of those as well. Yeah, this is a page of dogs. And I don't know if you could see that really well, but they're just small little thumbnails, notes made. And then um, they are, uh, they're glued, screwed and um, painted. They have, they have several coats of gesso and then they have acrylic paint over the top of them. Um, the eyes are either, there are they're these assorted beads that I found, or they have um, different types of metal sometimes are used in them as well. So, and then they have charms on them and um, other, again, other found objects when, when and where I think they're appropriate. So does that help? Or do you want more about like how to, uh, building is pretty standard. I mean, it's glued and clamped and nailed together. Uh, they don't always work. You know, sometimes I have a preconceived notion of how it's supposed to look and it changes along the way and or uh, some have been reworked into other dogs. And um, a lot of people for this exhibition have brought in pieces. So, so when I saw the, the opening back at the beginning of the month, I was really quite uh, surprised to see because I think they have changed over time, uh, but they still kind of all retain the same I, I think you can tell by looking at them that one particular artist did them and there's a style that has developed as a result. So with the, the wood, so that's primarily trying to kind of just like already cut wood. Is it just like pine or, or yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's individually or sand if you need to, if you're looking yep. for a specific um, I, I have been like now, um, when I first started there, I found the ends of, they were actually little, I don't know if they were butter knives or, or what they were, but um, I used the middle ends of those to, I got them from the dollar store by the packet full. And I ran out of those um, because the, the store didn't stock them anymore. So I said, well, I have to change ears now. So um, I have tried various ear forms over the years and um, you know, they, they seem to evolve still and still hold up as, as a dog. And um, I can't remember what year it was when somebody asked me, they said, well, why dogs? Don't you want to do, could, could you do me a cat? And I said, yeah, I could do you a cat. And so um, cats have been added. Uh, there are, there are dog, or excuse me, there's, there are cows, there's a camel, there's donkeys. There was a whole circus series and um, the Wizard of Oz series. And so, you know, um, I uh, really like to just simply find those. Uh, I used to be a dog owner, so that makes a difference as to why I started with those. But um, in 2000, I think it was also in 2007, 
um, the Tabi Museum, we had a collaborative show there where I made 20 of the dogs and um, they were then in turn, um, I invited various artists to pick one up and they uh, painted it and decorated it and brought it back and then it was auctioned off. And that um, was split between the Tabi Museum and the Humane Society. And uh, a friend of mine who works, Margaret Lee, who works at the museum suggested the name of Doug's Dogs and that's, that has stuck. And then um, they are now, have I just completed number 353 the other day here. So um, it's another, uh, I don't know if you guys might have seen the Van Gogh dog that was at the art auction in December. Um, somebody asked me to duplicate that and I have made a, a, another version of it, so. Is this one that's on the screen, is that one of the circus ones? It is, that is one of the circus ones, yes. Yeah, there was, yeah, you can see the, the ears there. That's those metal ears are, um, they're little butter knives, I think is what they are. And um, I would just simply snap off the handle, <laughs> drill through it, make them ears. And like I said, I, I just, every, every chance I went, I went to the dollar store and bought those. And, and then she told me they weren't going to get them anymore. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so. So this, I have, uh, you have anybody else before I ask one more question? Are we good? You have a question? Yeah, okay. I don't think we do. Oh, the one that's in. Oh, there it is. He was going to grab it. He just didn't go up. I bet you did. Oh, don't do it. Come on. After I was, I had a question too about kind of like you know with, with your different series and stuff you've done yep. over. Um, there's a lot of in the skateboards or the tablets for Modern Man series. Each tablet kind of is a little different in theme or the subject uh, yep. on it. But did you have? Um, well, I'll let part is three forty two. Three forty two. Okay. So this is a newer one. So can we see it? Yes, you can see it. Yeah. So this is the one we were getting. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, those there was there was two any like information about this one. <laughs> What's um, <better> than me? <laughs> they, they are they are Irish setters. Okay. You have you have the you have the the full setter, and the other one is uh, I think it's called a red spotted setter, Irish setter. Um, they they just kind of fell together because I said I want something very animated looking. And um, I wanted it also to be the kind of like old bird, old world bird decoy type situation, you know, because that's why he's mounted on the on the stand that he is. But I think it really gives it the animation that that I was after in that particular piece. You have an idea what kind of wood it is? Uh, it is, it is pine. I'm going to show you. It's pine, um, and there might be other because. Um, the body is a different type of wood than the legs are. Okay, yeah. I, I, I do know that. So okay, and it's all it's all various components from the hardware store. So uh, <laughs> I have, I have um, lots of um, customer miles or not miles, but benefits built up at Ace Hardware. So <laughs> that's very great, very whimsical. Okay. Um, I, to get I, back to your question about the. Yeah, Tab the, the skateboard. Like, you know, kind of a little bit about that series as to how that maybe started. You said that was kind of an idea for a long time, but like, yep. some um, of it responds to current events. Some of it doesn't. So some of them are, you know, a little. Yeah. The the the, the first two were made in like two thousand and seven. And I think we're ex exhibited that particular year as well. And they were kind of just overlooked, you know. Um, I think most people just, you know, like the, the way that they were displayed were like um, nobody, nobody raised an eyebrow at them and so on and so forth. And then um, when I came down here in 2018, I brought five blank skateboards with me and they were stored under my bed until again uh, the pandemic lockdown and i said hey let's pull these out and start and i had collected all this stuff 
um, over the years. And when I started doing it or putting them together, it was like, how can I get these often disparate items to work as a unit? Um, and if you look, uh, uh, I might have said in, in, in the artist statement that they were, to me, they are the equivalent to what we're, what I'm going to say, I suppose, uh, or I'll say supposedly the tablets, uh, the Ten Commandments were on, to that shape. Um, so this, the wood is a stand-in for whatever particular stone those were, but the shape is also very cartouche-like to me, okay? And um, the symmetry, I've always, always just loved symmetry. And um, it's like, it satisfies my need for that. And then it's just like, but how can I keep this, you know, cause if you work with symmetry, sometimes there's a danger of it being too monotonous. And I think that I have not, um, let's say not overdone any of that in the sense of it. And, and if you see the piece now, the newest piece um, really resonates because of, the, I think the divide in our country and um, for lack of anything else, I think sometimes the, you really have to question our politicians is, is like, do you not have just any common sense left or never had any to begin with, you know, because um, it in and there is some religious aspects that I'm like uh, being being a non practicing Catholic that still resonates with me. You know, I was afraid when I started using the uh, crucifix shape that that might offend some people, but for me, that is a very powerful symbol and it transcends the cross and the crucifix, transcends many, many things over time. And uh, um, I like it in the in the designs as as from the design standpoint, the graphic sense of them. And so, uh, if there were no people outside your building protesting, I I, I feel okay then. So <laughs> we managed it. We got by pretty good. It's our <laughs> the people as a whole really responded to and enjoyed the the, the tablet pieces. That's okay. Well, I think overall, when I looked at the show, people questioning uh, some of the couple people questioning some of the symbol use and stuff like that, but but it's good. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it, I left it open. Um, I I wanted it not to be um, like yeah, this is this is my kind of. Uh, I don't want it to be dogma, but you know, I want people to go sometimes like you know, WTF, what's he trying to do here? <laughs> and um, sometimes it was just like, um, oh, let's just leave them, leave them hanging with questions like that. You know, like you read into it what you want to read into it and um, leaving it more open-ended from that standpoint. Well, thank you very much for meeting with us tonight. Yeah. We'll be, I mean, we'll, we're going till 7.30, but I mean, if everybody wants to thank Doug for coming and. Yeah. <laughs> it's, really good. it's really good to have you here. I know we're not in person, but you're here. So, <laughs> and you're here, so it's, yeah, it's it. It's well, I was, I was just, I just was so glad that we got this to work this morning. And, and so, um, I guess I, I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to be on display there. And, um, you know, uh, as I, Walter was the one who said, like, I'd like to see this work there. And I go, okay. And so um, I thank him for that as well. And then I, I do believe that the pieces work well together, you know, because of, because of the amount of color and so on and so forth in them. So, so, uh, for you know that the dog and pony show moves on to Bismarck in June. Um, I don't know if it will be called dog and pony two or if it'll be called dog and pony three, but kind of the cute aspect is there's a third artist involved and he's being billed as a real artist. So, <laughs> so yeah, Ned, Ned, right? Ned Krauss, Ned yes. Krauss. Mr. Rambesis, yep. He taught, yeah. he taught for years at uh, NDSU. 
I, I think it was there. Yes, I do believe so. Yes, yeah. Yes, he was in far from the right channel, but yeah. he was. Yeah, um, but that'll be cool. That'll be cool because we'll bring the work down there when it's about time. Yeah. Yep. 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 So I, I, again, I appreciate you storing it there and uh, doing what you got to do. So okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you can if anybody wants to talk to Doug or ask him a couple of questions. Um, Doug, if you want to hang around yep. and stuff, I will. Yep. <laughs> um thank you all for coming it's good to good to be able to listen all right yeah next week so so very well you should do this with other artists I, because I, nobody wants to come here far away yeah least, well we have we've done, done We've done our this. Picture. We've done this for oh, our right our here. jury shows. Yeah, I I've oh, seen that. I see, I've seen the postings, and I, I I just felt better doing it this way than kind of taking anything right. from Walter oh, on, I, his, on his night. So you know. Oh, yeah. No, but this it was good. And okay. you're that is the plan yes so do you know the date for you said it started june uh, just to plug it for anybody that wants to know it's june 6th through the 30th i think it's what it is so okay cool well that'll be a favorite dog then it got serious here, right? Diana asked if you have a favorite dog. Um, I forgot about that. I like, I really like, um, like I, well, there's, there was some that were not in the show that, um, that I have been developing as of late that I really like the, uh, the direction that they're going. So, but anyone in the show would be, I really, really like the, little, the dog on wheels, the little dog on wheels. Yeah. Oh, uh, just the road dog or the motorcycle? Road dog. Yeah. Road, he... road dog. So, uh, well, I, I like the motorcycle dog too that your mom owns. So, you know, yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's one. It's so it's light. Uh, like, it's got like some black set of wheels. I used to be actually. So, that one's pretty, pretty cool one too. Yeah. 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 I, I, that one came together pretty pretty nicely and so it's just like i'm always thrilled when that happens <laughs> so you you mentioned um you mentioned you're kind of you got a respite now from like some stuff i know you're still uh painting kind of in the, the smoking bird series and stuff but do you have any or anything you're um, trying to i have i've actually just, i just yeah, actually like finished um the new series um, playing off the uh, kind of the skateboard idea, but it's they're called bird boards, and they use the words like um, bird song, bird shot, bird call, and uh, they're they're mounted on what looks like a cabinet door. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so like, got, like a little larger size again. Right. Yep. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much for the purchase. Okay. At least yes. we can go on me and say something about on pensions, on social security, fixed income, right? <laughs> Stay healthy. <laughs> Keep creating. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. This one is really went well. So, yeah, well, we'll see you later. Bye bye. Well, right. okay. oh, um, it was it was really it was really cool to to have things on display and, and be able to put, put it up in the gallery because I realized aside when we were doing this I realized aside from I think a faculty show yep this was the first time you got had work that was in the, in the space I know that there was the faculty show yep but yep I I still had gotten some in there for the yeah when I was uh, working working the part time um, from twenty that twenty. 15 to 2018 there yes yeah. so yeah i still got in that one but um uh, yeah but the, during that 2014 to 28 pe period i was making no work you know it was just not conducive for some reason you know and i know i know how that is when you're like a gallery coordinator <laughs> everything I, I, 
I'm sure you're torn very thin. Yeah. So yeah. I I I, I like to say I like to say I, I sometimes make friends. <laughs> okay. I like sometimes, do. but uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and end our stream right now. Um, for okay. anybody watching on Facebook. Um, we've been at the Northwest Art Center listening to artist Doug Flieger uh, talk about uh, his work uh, as part of the Dog and Pony Show too, which if you haven't seen, you've got approximately 24 more hours to get <laughs> to see it and you shouldn't miss it. So, so it goes through tomorrow yet? <laughs>